everybody. Welcome back to the Duck Center. I'm your host, Jay, the Duck Dude. How about them ducks? A 52 to 13 spanking of South Dakota in Autzen Stadium. Although not unexpected, it was still a convincing win that produced results from all aspects of the game. Of course, Marcus Mariota played according to plan with 14 of 20 passing, 267 in the air, and two scores, as well as rushing for two more, all in the first half. But what about the three-headed monster of Marshall, Tyner, and Freeman? Oh, I don't know. Over 400 all-purpose yards. But before I go into more detail into the big three, Marshall, what in the heck were you thinking? I mean, come on. There have been epic examples of terrific plays from one end of the field to the other, and yet they are all remembered by one thing. They showboated and tossed the ball prior to crossing the end zone. Just as Leon Lett of the Buffalo Bills during one of his Super Bowls. Byron, don't get me wrong, I understand that you thought you had crossed the line, but watching the game, it seemed as though you thought you had everyone beat and started to slow down around the 10 yard line. Even though they weren't going to catch you, finish strong, cross the line in Oregon style. You're better than that, and you sure as heck should not have to be hearing about a rookie type mistake. Enough said. The Big Three did not fail any Duck fan. All three looked great and contributed virtually evenly in the first half as they faced the Coyotes' first team offense and defense. Freeman scored twice, both on runs. His second was a pitch to the right and around the corner he went, practically untouched. Freeman, the freshman to the left side. It's Freeman who will get the catch. He'll sprint here to the near side. The first to spin it out into the end zone. Royce Freeman goes 26 yards. Oregon touchdown. As stated, he demonstrated a burst of speed and away he went. He fits the physical bill of a fullback with a running style of a tailback. I have to mention that I was not so impressed on a number of defensive stands. Sure, they gained a few yards here and there, but not anything to write home about. But there were a few rushing plays that blew right through our defensive line. I know this will be addressed this week in practice, but if this were to continue next week against Michigan State, we might have a game on our hands. I wanted to mention one more thing. I monitor Twitter from time to time, and last night after the game, I noticed that our good buddy from ESPN's College Game Day, Kirk Herbstreet, that will be in Eugene next week to cover the game, failed to mention Oregon in his top four teams in the country after Saturday's game had ended. Huge fail, Kirk. I hope that the Duck fans will be up early on Saturday and will give you an earful while on campus. Well, Duck fans, one game is in the books with many more to come. Thanks for tuning in to the Duck Center, and don't forget to leave remarks or requests down below or on Twitter at Weaver underscore got underscore Jays with an S. I will be sure to reply and comment on your remarks this coming, this coming week. Although, if you have any questions for our players on the team, make your request and I will see what I can do to get them answered. This week, I will be spotlighting Jeff Lockie for his incredible performance in the second half against South Dakota. Until next time, Duck fans, I am the Duck Dude. Go Ducks! <laughs>